Are you looking for the best exercise for bone health and longevity? Well, remember that high impact exercises like jumping can play a crucial role in bone health. But before you go jumping around, let's dive into the benefits of some of these exercises, the research that supports it. And then I wanna share this jumping routine that uh, someone sent to me. Uh, and I think it's kind of interesting because I think it's something that anybody can try. But please hear me when I say this may not be for everyone. Definitely talk to your doctor or your health team before you start jumping around and hurt yourself. But remember that high impact is important for bone health. All right, so before I get into the actual exercise, let me just review impact. Now, you've heard me talk about uh, the lift more trials before. You've heard me talk about resistance training. Remember that in the lift more trials, the intervention was called HIRIT, H-I-R-I-T, high intensity resistance and impact training. They do impact and lift more. We recommend impact for our patients. OsteoStrong is simulated impact. BioDensity is simulated impact. Whole body vibration is impact. Impact is important for bones. More so than resistance training, impact is required to get the stimulus to grow bone to show up. The reason for that is it takes over four multiples of body weight for your bone to go, whoa, man, I need to get stronger. And the truth is nobody is going to be lifting four times their body weight in any dynamic exercise, like bench press, back squat, overhead, whatever. It doesn't matter because think about four times your body weight is a tremendous amount of weight. So that's why we have to use impact rather than resistance training to focus on that stimulation of bone. Does that mean that resistance training is stupid and we shouldn't do it? No, not at all. But we need to do impact and resistance training. All right, so let me walk you through this study that I found. So this is a study on 14 young, healthy men. Now, clear issue here. The average age was 24. Their BMI was 22. This is not our population of interest, but it does go to show the value of impact. So let me just walk you through this. Now, this was a five minute high impact exercise program. This was done once or twice a day for only three days, right? This is a tiny study. They also used collagen versus placebo one hour before workouts. So they were probably looking, you know, what's the benefit of collagen? But what's cool here is that they actually measured bone formation and resorption markers. So they measured P1 and P and they measured CTX, my favorite BTMs. So that's cool. So the findings are kind of interesting because they did multiple blood marker sets um, after the exercises. So they actually did them in a fasted state and they did them in a postprandial state or after eating state. And what they noticed in the postprandial state, meaning after they fed, is that P1 and P went down. So did CTX, but CTX went down a lot more than P1 and P. In the fasted state, P1 and P actually went up, which is kind of interesting. And then CTX was unchanged. So it's also kind of interesting. So depending on whether or not they'd eaten or they were fasted, the results were a little bit different. Now, the conclusion in this study is essentially saying that this short duration, high impact exercise boosts bone formation without increasing resorption. I don't know that I really agree with that. I think what this really shows is that P1 and P and CTX can change based off of multiple variables. One of the biggest takeaways you could have here is that you shouldn't test P1 and P and CTX throughout the day under different circumstances. You should test them at the same time every day if you're going to test them and do it under the same fasted state or fed state. So what really happened in this? It's a little bit hard to know. I'm going to uh, link to the video of them doing this jumping protocol so you can see what it was. Now, is this going to be better than some of the other things that we've recommended? I don't know, because this has never been compared. But I like this because it's another simple thing, like heel drops. And I'll, I'll link to the heel drops video that we've done too. But it's a very simple thing, like heel drops, that anybody can do, assuming you have the dynamic capacity to do it. It's free, it's easy, um, and it's something that you can build up to. So I'm going to link to the video. Again, please do this with caution because not everybody has the ability to do this. I actually find it kind of hard to do. Uh, but you'll see in the video that they jump up and down, they jump forward, they jump backward. Remember, this was done in a young male population, not in an older postmenopausal population. So again, please do this with caution. I present it to you just as another option, another thing that's free that people can do. Is it better than heel drops? I don't know. Can you just do heel drops? Sure. But people ask me about this all the time, so I present it to you. So that's it for this jumping video. Not compelling evidence, but again, another tool. Remember, if you need help, if you need community, please consider joining our HealthSpan Nation. Our HealthSpan Nation is our community of individuals who are looking to optimize their bone health and use a weekly topic-driven Q&A 
to help them to communicate with the community, a vault of content that they can search to look for previous conversations around the topics of interest and discounts to products and services that we've added for our patients. So consider joining HealthSpan Nation, link in the description on YouTube. And if you are listening to this on a podcast, go to our website at optimalhumanhealth.com. Remember that a diagnosis of osteoporosis isn't the end, but deciding to reverse it is a beginning. I'll see you in the next video.